All right, thank you so much for making the time and uh, coming to this webinar. And this is uh, meant to be like uh, kind of like informal demo uh, to show you guys uh, what I've got so far for this data grid um, component and, and uh, really have a discussion with you guys uh, if this is something that, uh, that would be helpful for your work. And uh, I would really appreciate it if you, could, if you could give me suggestions and ideas how to improve it. Uh, or see any problems that I have uh, over here. Um, but uh, let's just uh, get started. And uh, I think since there are only a, a few of us, uh, if you have any comments and if you want to talk about something, just feel free. Just um, uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to just uh, talk, talk in the, in the voice uh, with voice or or just type in the chat, I will be able to see uh, your comment as well. All uh, right, so data grid table, right? So I guess um, traditionally, uh, you know, I don't know how you guys uh, uh, design uh, data tables, and I've 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 seen some of the some people that uh, you know in their blog posts, and uh, I've talked with some designers about their their general approach of designing a data grid. Uh, for now, they're basically kind of like you need to adjust uh, each cell one by one or like maybe column by column and uh, and sort of do this manual um, editing. Uh, for the purpose of this, um, this package is to take, uh, basically automate those, uh, those parts that, that, are, that are used to be manual. So but it, the idea is that whenever you have some data that is available as uh, JS, JSON or C, C, uh, CSV, and you can directly import it, and you can get a table ready-made, and then you can use that as a starting point to uh, to just uh, to, to do your, your further design. So of course, this data grid component I have already installed it in the, in the new file. And uh, let me just grab uh, a component over here. I'm just creating a frame right here. Um, and then components. I don't know if you guys have uh, have tried it out, but uh, the idea is that like there there are four different components, and they're basically the same. But the idea for them is that uh, you know each one represents a, a kind of like preset of a style. Uh, for for example, this is like a, you know classic uh, kind of table uh, like that, or maybe this guy um, you know with uh, horizontal separating lines, or maybe like this, or maybe the fourth one. So anyway, so anyway, like we we have a few presets right here, uh, but uh, we can also um, adjust those settings for example like on this uh, on this guy you can uh, you can you can uh, pick a different background color and a different font size uh, text color and header true or false like you can show the header or not or you can actually individually adjust the, the headers like uh, you know uh, the, the font size as well uh, for, uh, colors. I don't, I'm not going to go into that. And for this, uh, this guy is actually the divider for the header. So it's uh, it's a line between uh, the header and the, the content. I found it that to be useful if you can individually adjust that, like like that, right? And uh, border is the border of the table. Um, we have some options to, to adjust that and uh, color. And also for dividers, we can choose. Uh, either horizontal, like right now, we don't see other dividers because uh, the width is zero. But if we have, uh, if we make it a one, we can see this uh, horizontal uh, dividers, and then we can we can use both or or maybe vertical. Um, there are some other things, right? Yeah. So that's this guy, and the next one is uh, that I, like I mentioned, we can actually 
uh, like, uh, so for now, like if we drag a new component onto the canvas, we're, we're going to get some default data so that we can play with these um, settings. But uh, what's really useful and interesting is that you can actually bring in your own, uh, your own data. So let me just grab this test data. This guy, this is a JSON file or maybe a CSV file that'll work as well. So it's a JSON file and uh, it's got some stuff there, right? Um, I hate this order, but yeah, it get, it, it's got some stuff. And uh, again, automatically um, grab the data and automatically grab the, um, the title and the header for each of the field, these are all these are all based on uh, what's available in your JSON file. And uh, and now, uh, what's uh, really interesting uh, is is something that that I wanted to show you here is that uh, you know now um, we can do some customizations, but uh, the really interesting customization is going to be done uh, in terms of code. So we can, we're gonna do this override. So we can add an override, create a new override, and then we'll go ahead and edit the file. Of course, get rid of everything. And uh, let's just uh, call it a table. And get rid of everything here as well. Um, now let's say if you want to remove uh, the first column, that's, a, that's the simplest uh, task that we can do at this point. So I'm gonna have a, like a columns and uh, it, it's uh, an array. And then we're gonna say accessor um, ID. Uh, so this ID is, uh, is, this, is this guy, right? So that's, the, the column that we want to customize and we want to uh, hide it. So we're gonna say fa show false, right? And then if we go back to the canvas and make sure that we actually select this uh, overwrite from, uh, from the properties panel. And, um, and then, uh, you know, it's gone, right? So, <laughs> and, of, and of course in the preview, it's gone as well. So that's uh, that's the very first task that we can do in terms of uh, customizing the table uh, via code. So because it's code, it can we can do a lot of uh, interesting stuff. But but I wanted to uh, remind you is that like uh, you know normally uh, this uh, override only works in preview, right? Only works in preview. It does not have any effect. Uh, it's not supposed to have have an effect on the canvas. I just I did some hacking to make it actually uh, work on the canvas uh, because I I think it makes sense to for us to see those uh, customizations on the canvas, not like not only on the in the preview. So I did some some hacking, and that's why you know whenever we change something here, we probably need to kind of move this table around or maybe resize it to see it. Uh, uh, to see it, uh, you know, uh, being uh, being effective. So just remember that. But uh, so far, like I found, like it's it's uh, it's working well for me. Um, and uh, give it a try to see if it actually works for you. So that's the very first thing that we want to do. For example, we can we want to do we can do something more interesting. Uh, so this avatar. This avatar right now is just a whole bunch of um, whole bunch of uh, URLs, right? right. Whole bunch of uh, URLs, and what we want to do is not just show this text, right? We want to show the actual image. How we how are we are we gonna do it? So let's go to override and then make another column. Uh, so that's going to be another element inside the array. And uh, you know, we're going to call this avatar. 
and we want to show it so we don't use this one and what we want to do is to uh, use a custom component uh, to uh, to basically to render this avatar uh, column data so uh, what we're going to do here is uh, to write this cell that represents each uh, the component for each of the cell inside the table um, so uh, re remember this to be capitalized. So capitalize C and uh, cell and um, its value is gonna be a function. And I'm gonna just, um, just, just uh, type it like that. So it's, it's a proper, it's, a, it's an object that has a property called cell, which has a property called uh, value and uh, inside, we're going to just say image like that. Okay. Let me just save this. Table. Webinar. Okay. And if we go back and we have images, right? Um, yeah, of course, I... I I probably went a little bit fast. If you're not familiar with this syntax, um, this is, uh, you know, this is just a function and uh, this is an object destructuring. So basically taking out interesting part in the, uh, in the value of the parameter so that uh, we can use it. So basically the idea is that, uh, you know, this is a parameter. This is a parameter and what we're going to, what we are doing here is basically this, right? Um, okay, so we have two columns. Uh, we have, uh, I mean, we have uh, customized two columns. So we have images right here. So uh, like, like I said, uh, because we can put any arbitrary React components here, this is uh, really powerful. Um, for example, we can do something like this. We, we're gonna create a, create a, a frame here and uh, create another frame. I'm gonna just add some image as the fill of this, uh, like this guy, right? Just put an image here. So that becomes an image. And then, and then we're gonna convert this as a design component. So command C, uh, command K, and this is a command, uh, design component, and then uh, we can just rename it to, let's say, profile. And uh, let's rename this image to be photo. And then if you come back to our um, override, we can now import sky from canvas. And then, uh, it's called profile. So instead of this image, uh, we're gonna use profile. And uh, the prop is gonna be called photo. It's, if we go back, uh, it's a little bit weird like that. Uh, that is because uh, all the design, design components are positioned absolutely. So we're gonna, we're gonna need to change it to position relative. And that should work much better, right? So that looks much better. And uh, why I'm thinking this is actually interesting is because it, now it, it's a design component, right? You know, you can do whatever change on the canvas, you, you're gonna see it inside the table. So that's super, super useful, I think. You can really customize however you want. And uh, the code you have to write is very minimal, just a little bit like that. As long as uh, you understand how override works, as long as uh, you you know how to write those uh, JSS tags, like like you do in, in uh, any React coding, and uh, you'll be able to customize it, um, you know, really the the way you want. So that's the design component. Right, and uh, what I want to show you, the other thing is uh, like, if I do go into, into the preview and if we actually inspect this element and uh, basically check out what's actually going on behind the scene, right? 
So this is just a table and uh, with uh, that's, I mean, that's really just a standard HTML uh, table stuff. So, so that's table and for each, uh, we got a, uh, we got a t, t body. For each a row, we have a, a TR, which is a table row. And for each of the element, we're gonna uh, have, uh, we have this TD, right? The reason that I'm showing you this is that uh, we can do something actually pretty interesting is uh, let's just um, um, let's just keep doing this one, and we can customize the props for each of the row, each of the tr that I just showed you. Uh, this way, you can say uh, row props. Um, uh, let's see what kind of props that we want to override this. Um, So for each of a row, let's say if we want to change the background of the TR, we can we can do it like this way. Line number 23, we can say style, background, um, I don't know. I would just use very ugly color for now. So we got a blue color, right? So that's that that's not very complicated or not very useful, but the idea is that uh, you can use you can put a lot of uh, different props right here, and uh, for example, uh, we can make uh, we can uh, make a uh, make it uh, like uh, you know um, a pattern like alternate part pattern like this one is a darker background, this one is a lighter background, so on and so forth. So because it's because it's cold, we get a lot of uh, flexibility, right? And um, actually, so instead of uh, like right right now, we just uh, uh, set the value of the row props to be just an object. But what we can we can make it uh, more interesting is that uh, you know give it a function, and uh, it's gonna return an, an object. And the reason that it is interesting is that uh, we can say row index. And then use that to create that pattern that I, uh, if it's zero, so it's so it's a even number of uh, of rows. Let's make it let's use a slightly better color. Uh, okay, see if that looks better. So this is. You know, alternate pattern. That's uh, that's pretty useful, right? And uh, what else? What else we can do here? And since you've, uh, I assume you are uh, familiar with Framer, right? So we can we can use this one while hover. Let's just copy this color here. Okay, guess what's gonna what's gonna happen? And now it only works. Uh, it doesn't work on, on 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 the canvas anymore. But in the preview, uh, there's some issues because uh, we need to actually set the default color with uh, something like uh, initial or maybe just style like that. And in the preview, see that that's hover color, you know, highlighting every row, right? So that's, uh, you know, really you can do a lot of stuff uh, by just playing with uh, different kind of options, different props for each row. So that's uh, something that's working for now, and uh, we have a few more minutes. Let me just uh, show you how to build that uh, radio button. Um, basically adding a, a different column in the front and so that we can actually select it, uh, the column. I think the in, in the videos, in the videos I, I tease you about the checkbox, but maybe 
a radio box, a radio uh, button is uh, makes more sense. But uh, let's see how to build it. Um, we, we're gonna add. We're gonna just use this uh, the first column, and we, we're gonna show it. But instead of showing the, the ID, we're gonna show uh, so and. Uh, And let's just um, row index. Yeah, actually, don't show this for now. Um, so it's going to be an input type equal radio, right? And uh, if you check the preview, we should have this one, but it does not really work. Uh, we want to only select just uh, just one of the item right here, and you can guess how we're gonna do it, right? Um, so we get over here. Um, so if we if have like this is I think if it's checked, I think uh, if it's checked, if it's true. And uh, it's gonna be all checked. Otherwise, it's gonna be it's gonna be unchecked. And we want to determine whether this is a check or not by something like uh, by the index, for example, by the you know the index of the row. So we're gonna just, uh, for example, like we can actually extract uh, the index value from here, row index, and then and then let's say if this index is equal to two and that's going to be the third row the third row is now selected and otherwise the other ones are not selected right and uh, the next step is just uh we need to change this number like, like instead of uh, using a uh, hard-coded value here we're going to use something that we can change right so in this data like app state you can say selected uh, index um, by default, it's uh, zero, and then and then we can over here. If the the current index is the same as the selected index, and we're gonna we're gonna say it is uh, selected right now, you know, the first one is selected, right? Um, so this is easier to see. Maybe that's better. Okay. Now ne the next step is to actually change this uh, selected index when we click on the input, right? So it's going to be unclick, um, which is going to be a function. How do we change the the selected index, right? So we're going to just say select index equal index. So the code is probably not super easy to see. Uh, maybe I'll make it slightly smaller. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you the full code right after. But I'll, I'll tell you that it actually works. See? And you can, you can do, uh, you can, for example, show different color uh, when, when, this, uh, when this row is selected by changing this row props, you know, Pretty much the same story as this one, right? So I'm gonna just uh, make it small, and uh, hopefully that will show you more about the code. So you can use this similar strategy to 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 show a different background color for the selected rows, right? So that's a radio button, and I think it's uh, the, the 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 idea is that like it it's actually really powerful. We can we can play with a lot of stuff here. The fact that we can use any arbitrary React component here as a cell, uh, that's that's really powerful. Uh, we can you know we can use design components. We can use our own code components. We can use HTML elements. Um, you know, sky the sky is the limit, right? Uh, yeah, I don't have time to cover that uh, expanded rules, but uh, I will. Uh, so maybe I'll. I'll sh I, sh I should say this because uh, what I've I, what I've shown so far, 
um, it's it's more of a like an exploration of what's possible and uh, the way uh, we're gonna do it. The the actual detailed API it might may um, maybe it may change in the future. So I'm not 100% sure that this is gonna be the way. Uh, maybe uh, in in the long in the little bit long term, but the this columns, this stuff, this is actually the same. Is this is actually the uh, exactly the same API as the underlying library that I'm using, which is called Re React Table. So that's why we have this accessor cell, etc. So this this is not something defined by me, but it's um, uh, it's it's uh, by that um, that library. Um, yeah, like I said, we can. I'll just show you a demo of uh, what those things look like with this one minute left. And, uh, you know, we can, it's going to be, it's going to be the same as what I've shown you in those videos in, on Twitter, if you see it. So you can do hover actions and you can guess how we're going to implement this. The hint is that uh, we're going to use that uh, row actions and uh, you can detect whether a line is uh, hovered on and uh, show different things accordingly. And this one is, uh, you know, you can really show expanded roles like that. And the, notice that the animation, like the animation here, these are all done with animation uh, capability of uh, framer and framer motion. So it's exactly the same way that as we, as we uh, animate other, other stuff. Um, except that you know to make this guy work and that uh, there's some something special you so you can just uh, download the demos file which is available on the on github and also on the on the uh, on the package uh, page you can download it and uh, check out the code and it's a little bit more code than uh, than what I can uh, talk about at this webinar but that's what I have so far do you guys have any comments, questions? Nope, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Great work, Linton. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hope you find it useful. Um, and again, if you have any suggestions or questions, feel free to reach me on Twitter or email, whatever that you know how to find me. So thank you so much. All right. Thank you. So have a, have a great day and I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.